Oh, hello viewers, it's uh, Peter Elgar from the depths of Essex in England, from the town of Brentwood, the sleepy town of Brentwood, folks. Now today I'm going to try something completely different. I'm going to do some editing with the help of my daughter. Now this video is a request by one of my viewers and subscribers. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please, folks, and then you'll get all the latest, there's a little bell thing, I think you've got to press on that and tick all and then all the notifications of new videos you'll get an email sent to you so don't forget to do that I'm going to do a video about how to make up developers from the actual chemicals and I was taught this way back in 1951 when I joined the East Ham Grammar School Photographic Society and our chemistry master, Mr. Hayes, so we used to call him Gabby Hayes because there was a cowboy with Roy Rogers, wasn't there? Films called Gabby Hayes. <laughs> and um, Mr. good old Gabby Hayes, let us use all the chemistry, all the taxpayers' chemicals to mix up developers. And um, I've done it ever since because it's very, very cheap. I do have one or two bought ones like um like pro micro i bought some years ago and i was then i've been given some by a camera club member who worked at champions and i was given some rodinel by a, a kind gent on Flickr who sent me a load of film and some rodinel to develop it in and i i haven't heard from him since i sent him a nice letter of thanks but i think the poor gent is very seriously ill but anyway, I appreciate anything that people send me and it all gets used. So I'm going to show you in a few parts how I do mixing up chemistry and my chemicals and the scales that I use and all the secrets of the water. And anyway, <laughs> there's not many secrets really. Once I tell you all my secrets, there won't be secret. But anyway, I hope you enjoy it and we'll start with showing you some scales. Now this is the set of scales I got when I left University College London in 1970 to set up on my own as a local freelance. They were saved from the dump. They're chemical balance that you probably use in school and they're very very old. But these have served me for years and years until now. Well last Christmas when my kids bought me some precision scales, modern type, digital would you believe. You have to have big weights, that's, that's a 200 gram, 150 right through to a 2 gram. And then, then there's another little set here, mustn't lose them. There's a 1 gram weight there which I use, another set of t 2, 5 and 10. And in this little one, these are ultra small weights and you've got to pick them up with tweezers because they're very very delicate you mustn't get any finger grease on them otherwise it upsets the weight and these go down to 0.1 of a gram half a 0.5 0.2 of a gram little tiny ones and they they've served me for years and years and the scales I put the I have to set it level first I have to level them up oh they're not leveled now because I've disturbed it but they were level and you can level it up with these little screws here and then I put the chemicals onto this paper here and in this paper which is the same weight hopefully roughly as the other bit of paper I, I put the weights so I can put my chemicals on there and put the weights on there like um, like that and then put f five grams of chemicals on or whatever and then lift it up and when your balance goes in the middle and swings backwards and forwards it's correctly balanced but there, there used to be a plumb line here and it was swinging and you could you could um, adjust it but that's all broken off so I had to level it up by guesswork with some screws underneath but anyway, they've served me for so long 
but I don't want to throw them out because they're a good memory but I'll show you what I've got nowadays this is what I've got now as my Christmas present a professional digital mini scale set maximum weight is 50 grams so in order to get 100 grams of something I've got to weigh out two lots of 50 but the 100 gram one was much more expensive so I said to my kids no this will do me because I can always weigh out two, two lots of 50 grams comes in a little posh box look how small everything is compared with my old scales the instructions of course and this is it there's a little pot here which is pretty useless for most chemicals because it's too small but um now here we are oh, this hinges back ah oh, here we are it hinges back oh you've got to have a you've got to put a, a, a battery in it your size double a battery goes in there maximum 50 grams and it will weigh 0.001 of a gram which is quite accurate for the small amounts of phenidone I sometimes need and you have to zero it first by pressing check was it sound here I can't read with my glasses oh on and off you've got to follow the instructions zero it and then you can stand your little pot on there put in a very small amount of chemicals if they're it minute but what I found I got some of these plastic pots and these were from my dessert they were cheesecakes and I thought oh they're much better because I can stand that on there and I can put in 50 grams or 20 grams of chemicals oops which the little one you'll never get 20 grams of chemicals in that one that's it they supplied it's too small but I can put it in there and it does it works I've made up a couple of developers with it and um, it works perfectly so that's what I use now together with some tweezers um, they supply tweezers and they, they supply a, a 50 gram weight for checking the accuracy and um, I've checked it that's okay so also you'll need filtered water now this was if you of course you can all use distilled water but why pay a lot of money for distilled when you can use a brighter filter like this system and this was nothing it came from the website trashnothing.co.uk when people will give stuff away rather than th throw it away they're not a they don't want you to dump stuff and a lady was on there with this advertising this oh, I contacted her straight away he said yes so I only have to go to Hutton and she gave me that with extra filters as well and this one has in the bin there for ages it lasted me for ages a filter brighter it's called and it filters out the hardness your calcium and your magnesium salts and you don't have to pay for distilled water so that's, that's my scales that I'm going to show you. Now this is my Aladdin's Cave, my chemical cupboard. It's in this house which I bought in 1965. It used to be a pantry. And there's my chemical cupboard. There's my ag for rodin now. And come down. And this is the Pro Micro here. I, my mate from the camera club gave me before he was made redundant. Here's some other, I'm going to use that one, that's hydroquinone and in there is potassium carbonate which I use in my print developer and down below here we've got some sodium sulphite which is the preservative and I'm going to show you all that as I weigh it out but I thought this is the chemical cover now you'll say how did it get all that lot of chemicals? well I bought some but I've been given loads and loads of them by a camera club member who moved away from Brentwood and he went to live in Cornwall and he was into mixing chemical and he, he earned a lot of money much more than ever I did I never seen money like that and he, he could afford to buy all these chemicals 
So when he moved, he gave up film photography and went completely digital, leaving loads of chemicals. So that was some of it, the potassium carbonate there. All the ones in these white bottles were from him. Some methyl there. Monomethyl and methyl sulfate, that's methyl. And the load of stuff from my mate Barry, who moved away, gave me these chemicals. So there we are, we're going to use some of those. Well, I'm going to mix up some ID11 Ilford formula film developer, but I'm only going to mix up 500 mils because I've already got some in the bottle, but I think I could fit. 500 mils in now what I do I put some filter let me filter there put some filtered water into a container which used to contain chemicals like like that that's got that's got meat on it and in that I put a water heater which cost me 50 pence in a church jumble sale that's a water heater and it warms it up to a nice temperature so you can dissolve your chemicals so that's now warm and I won't show you how it's plugged into the electric because any electricians amongst you will faint but um, look, that's warm now so first of all we're gonna as our chemistry masters used to say next of all you boys are gonna make hydrogen but well, we're not making hydrogen we're going to make ID11 film developer. Here's the formula. We're going to use half the amount. So it's 1 gram of methyl, 2.5 grams hydroquinone, 50 grams sodium sulfite anhydrous, 1 gram of borax, warm filtered water, and then make it up to 500 mils with cold water. Now one of my viewers wanted to perceptol. Here's a formula for perceptile, but it's got sodium chloride in it. 30 grams for a litre. Now, you can't put all this salt in because it's got iodine in it. And iodine is a restrainer. So you have to have chemically pure sodium chloride for that formula, which I haven't got. So it's much easier for perceptile. I'm going to cheat because I've got, I got pro professionally made up one litre of it. But that's the formula for perceptile. I've only got methyl, sodium sulfite, sodium chloride, those three in, in your water. But we're not going to do that one, we're doing ID11. So here we go, folks. <laughs> 50 grams of methyl. Well, it's up to 47.8 at the moment. 48. Now, as it goes to that a point naught naught one, if it's fractionally over, nobody will notice the difference because they can't make films emulsions as accurate as that. Forty nine point two, going up. Forty seven, forty nine point seven point. Yeah, fifty point fifty point naught three five of a gram. Or it's taking take off point naught three five. It's a minute little amount. Yeah, that's, that's exactly 50 grams. Well, that's clever, folks. Now we're going to put this aside, switch it off, and we're going to weigh out the methyl because we've got to put it in a certain way. The methyl and the sulfite have to be put in in a certain way which I'll show you. you know, so it's half the amount, so it's one gram of methyl. So I've got some little small spoons here and I've got some larger ones saved from when you have a McDonald's McFlurry. Very useful the McDonald's, I'll save them. Here's a small one, one gram, switch it on, it weighs this little pot. No, one gram of methyl. Um, see that? It's very small, that little pot. I hope it's not going to get boring. That's what I warned you. It might, it might get boring taking the time to weigh everything out. 
it's going up. I should have put it in a larger pot, 0.8 of a gram, not, not in one gram, nearly there. Near 0.9. Oh, there we are, one gram exactly. Now, you mustn't put the, you mustn't put that into your hot water unless you put in a little pinch of your sodium sulfite first. So, put that away. Otherwise, it will oxidise your metal. So, we get a little pinch of sodium sulfite into your warm water, stir it with a metal stirrer that another camera club member made me years and years ago. So I thought, oh, it's very, very useful belonging to camera clubs. Now, in goes your metal. That will now dissolve. It's going a bit brown, yes, it's dissolving nicely. And then, when it's dissolved, you can put in the rest of your sodium sulfite. Yes. Gently like that. You don't plonk it in all, all at once, you have to stir it. Now this is the anhydrous type with no water of crystallisation. If you get the crystals, it, it's got water crystallisation and you have to use double the amount you do with the anhydrous. But I buy five kilograms of it at a time. It lasts me for years and years. So that is now gone into the warm water. And the next one is two and a half grams of hydroquinone. We use a bigger pot for that. As I, as you, as I said, although it goes to 0.001 of a gram, the film cam film manufacturers can't make two emulsions exactly the same. They, they can't get two batches of gelatin the same. It, so you can't, it can't be absolutely accurate. So it's two and a half, two and a half grams of hydroquinone, which is dihydroxybenzene, 2.3 ER. 2.533, oh my god, tiny little amount, oh god blimey, a few crystals only, see you won't be able to, with that amount you wouldn't tell the difference in your film, <laughs> you wouldn't tell the difference, they can't make two batches of the film the same, now, when that's all dissolved in your warm water, switch that off, and you put in your hydroquinone, now, if you're making a formula with phenidone, a minute amount of phenidone, you put your phenidone in with the hydroquinone and it helps it dissolve. But we're not using phenidone, which is an Ilford chemical. One through, with it pyrozolidone? I forget the exact name of it now. But we're not using phenidone in this ID11 formula because when ID11 on D76 was invented in 1925, Phenidone wasn't invented. Then the last one is borax, one gram. Now I won't use the minute little pot again, I'll use the this is borax in here. Well, another one means make certain yes, it's sodium tetraborate is borax because I've got another one which has got sodium carbonate in it from the film developers. And that, that, this is the borax. Again, came from my camera club friend. We don't need much. This is the alkali. It's a, gen it's a gentle alkali. Make certain we only want one gram of borax because we can easily make a we can easily make a mistake while I'm talking. You put the wrong amount in, then it would ups mess up your films. 0.9 Whoops. Point as 1.017. I don't think I could take out the No, you can't get it exact. Oops, where we are? I did. I got it exact. It's one gram. 
cover that up. And when you're pouring your hydroquinone, I should have told you, you be a bit careful, don't breathe in hydroquinone crystals of powder. This could be slightly carcinogenic. And that is why they don't have the powder per micro anymore because it was carcinogenic. And the workers refused to make the heap sulfate. Hexaethylene and monophenol sulfate, they refused to make it. The poor old Mayan bakers couldn't sell promicro. So we're going to rinse this out. It's had a minute amount of chemicals in. We'll rinse that out. Then we make it up to 500 mils with cold water. So we get a 500 mil measure. Uh. You see, it's some of that sulfite slightly not dissolved. Now we've got to be careful, I don't want to spill anything on my lovely new Christmas present scales. And where's the 500? Oh, here we are. Yeah, well, 500 with cold water. You, you, when you do chemistry, you've got to be a bit careful. We don't spill things. And I'll cover up the scales now with the plastic lid. There we are. They're, they were new. I don't want to mess them up because they were my Christmas present. Oops, to the bottom of the meniscus. Look, if you are a fraction out, that's <laughs> it. Nobody will know because they can't make two batches of developer the same. Now let's see. This is my bottle of ID11, a glass bottle, brown. And it helps to stop oxidation. Now, I've got an idea. That 500 is not going to go in there. So what we'll do, we'll pour that, we'll pour that out into a one litre container. And we'll pour my fresh on top of that and then we'll see what happens. I may have some left over which I shall have to put into another bottle. There's a minute amount of sodium sulphite still. It will gradually dissolve. That's because I'm rushing. So I don't make it too boring. See, it can pretty boring for you but anyway I was asked to do it so that's what I'm doing now I, I can't be bothered to get a funnel we'll see how steady my hand is we'll pour in a litre I can't see if I've got it on camera because I'm watching what I'm doing I used to be able to pour hydrochloric acid like this and don't get it on my fingers but not bad for an 83 year old. I think it's going in. Blow me, that extra 500 mils has all gone in. I didn't think it was going to fit, but it did. And there we are. There we, not a drop spilt, folks. Good job, because I, I wasn't wearing gloves. <laughs> Mind you, it's, luckily it's not caustic acid. But there's my ID11. Fresh mixed, and I've shown you how I do it. So there we are. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And if you feel a bit kind, you can go on to buy me a coffee link, which I supply, and buy me a buy me a camera film. <laughs> thanks for watching, and thanks for all your support and kind comments over the couple of years I've been doing this. And I wish I was more proficient at this video lark so I could put on music and everything else like these everybody else does but anyway funny old Peter Elgar the old film bloke and chemical wizard is now signing off